guys, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Acoustic Silk Show. This is episode nine, and we're here with the Dark Lord himself, Kuja. Kuja, how you doing, man? Pretty good. Reading uh, Flaming Hot Cheetos out here. I like that. And uh, we're on the Acoustic Silk Show, so what's up? I appreciate that. Thank you so much for coming <clears throat> on. Um, appreciate course, appreciate you reaching out a couple months ago with all that amazing music you released. <laughs> um, so for those that don't know, this is Kuja, and you might you might have heard some of the music a couple months ago that he released on the channel, and I hope you guys liked it. So we decided to bring him on the show, and he's been so gracious to bless us today with his presence. Um, for those that don't know Kuja, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, like where you're from, how long you've been doing music, um, <clears throat> your, yeah. your, your style, you know, a little bit like that? Sure. Um, I'm from Connecticut. East Coast, um, it's cold a lot. It sucks here, and um, <laughs> I've uh, been doing music since I was like, I guess, fourteen. Like uh, officially, like, started my first band when I was fourteen. Okay. And um, we played a lot <clears throat> throughout high school, just like random like basement gigs, and then um, we did that pretty much for like eight years with like most of the same people okay. um we went on tour a complete failure of a tour okay. like we booked we booked shows and like uh basically drove like to ohio and they just told us like yeah you're not you're not scheduled to play your your tour manager lied about whatever he told you and like we paid him okay. uh but yeah not to get so like be so pessimistic um so yeah i've been doing music for a while and um this is my latest project and hopefully my last. <laughs> hopefully your last. Okay. Yeah. All right. You know, so I don't. I don't like to start over. I just want to make something good for once that sticks. <laughs> okay, I got you. <laughs> um, all right. So you were in a band. What was the band called? I'm not gonna disclose that because it's trash. Um, if you, I don't know. Like, <laughs> it's just bad. <laughs> all right. It was, and this was a rock band. Yeah, like. Alternative rock. Sometimes, I mean, we actually started as metal, like, and then we did all this crazy, dumb shit, like. And you were you the vocalist, or what was your role in the band? Yeah, um, I sang for most of it. Towards the end, we actually like broke off into like a smaller group, and I played guitar and that and sang. Okay. But that only lasted like one year, until I had a falling out without the person, and that's pretty much what led me to make this project. Okay. Awesome. So just like lost touch creatively with those people. Right. That happened. Not completely, but like I just got into different types of music and like I was in a position where like I could just do it all myself, so that's what I did. Okay. Yeah. So how how hard is it working in a group setting? Uh not hard. I mean it depends. Like if you're friends with the people, it's chill. Like I <clears throat> I would prefer that honestly. Like I don't like just being alone making music. It's like I mean, I like it, but I, I'm a social person. Like, I would definitely prefer to be in a, with a friend doing it. Okay. But uh, it's also nice, like having the complete creative control. That was something that <clears throat> bothered me about being in a group with other people. Is like I have really specific ideas and things that I think of in my head that I can't, I couldn't fully express because other people wanted to do this thing, and you know. So it's that's a, a perk is like just having the complete creative control. Yeah, I imagine that's a that's like a pro and con you have to balance because obviously if you're in a in a group you have to like balance all the bounce all the ideas off of them and if they don't really like it then I guess you can't do it as a group. So yeah. it's also nice to get instant feedback that you have people to like bounce ideas off of. That's like the the struggle of being solo is like wondering to yourself like is this actually good? Uh-huh. And then like having to like ask people or just go in your complete like gut feeling. Okay. So. So you said you've been making music since around 14, but started taking it more seriously around 16. Is that what you said? Um, I don't know if I said that exactly, but something like that. Yeah. Close enough. Um, sure. Okay, cool. So I guess how, lo how old are you now, if you don't mind me asking? I'm 23. All right, cool. So you've been making music for a while. Um, yeah, like almost 10 years, I think. All right, wow. So is this something you definitely want to do full time, or are you already doing it full time? Or like, what are your what are your plans with it? 
Um, whatever happens, happens. I don't know. Like, I can't predict the future, so whatever okay. happens, happens. I mean, that'd be awesome, but not doing it full time. I, I live in an apartment. Like, I have rent to pay and stuff, so I don't always like just sit here making music. So. Right. So, so when do you typically make music? Just like, whenever do you do, do a little bit every day? Or you just like, uh, like just, a massive binge. Yeah, I'm weird. Like there'll be periods where I get really into it, then there will be like a week or two where I just like can't do it because I've like, when I get into it, I kind of like go crazy and I just can't do anything but think about it. Mm -hmm. It's for like I'll do that for like three or four weeks, <clears throat> and I'll just like burn myself out. Uh -huh. And then I'll I'll go a week or two, like usually a week, just like completely like I might like listen back here and there to like things I've done the uh -huh. past month, but I won't actually like write <clears throat> that mm -hmm. much at all. Mm -hmm. I got you. So now that you say you were kind of in death metal rock group, I kind of I can kind of see a little bit in that in the music you produce now, but it's totally different than anything I've heard before, which I think is a good thing. Um, I initially heard it and I was like, wow, I could definitely see people like, I, I can definitely see like a strong percentage of music sounding like this in the future. Yeah, it's weird that you say that because I've heard that before, like from just other people that I've talked to and I don't know where that comes from. Like I, I, I tend to disagree, but like that's what people say, so I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. But for some reason, I just feel like in like 10 years, like, all the music we listen to could sound something like that. I like hope not because I just don't. <laughs> I don't know. Like that'd be weird. Yeah, it's it's good stuff. I don't I don't know where the future thing came from, but that's just what I thought initially. No, that's um, interesting. You said that because it's not the first time. You kind of validated that other person's opinion now more in my head. Like I'm gonna <laughs> think of, I'm gonna think about that more. Now. Yeah, I think it, I think it's a good sound because it's it's different than everything that's out now. But it kind of, it kind of has a similar, uh, I guess, mood feel to it. Mm -hmm. Like I don't know if you ever listened to like the weekend's first stuff, like House of Balloons, Thursday. Yeah, of course. Like those, oh yeah. You can't not you can't not listen to that. I, right. I just posted on my Snapchat the other day, uh -huh. like a few a few albums. I think I posted uh, Nirvana, uh, In Utero. I posted. Um, Jimi Hendrix, Voodoo Child, uh -huh. and I, I did The Weeknd in there, and I was just like, classics, like, that's what I wrote on it. Yeah. So, I like, I have a deep respect for that album, like, it changed music, <clears throat> you know? Uh, absolutely, it definitely did, and, it, and that was like one of the first times I had heard something that was truly mind-altering, and kind of, it changed, it changes the mood, of for sure, of like, when you listen to it. Um, yeah, for me, that it wasn't like that foreign to hear something like that because the reason I actually found out about the weekend was through um, he, one of the members of Portishead tweeted, Portishead is a band from uh, I think they're from Bristol, England, uh -huh. and they like tweeted about how this artist like sampled their song Machine Gun like illegally basically, and I was like, who the fuck would do that? <laughs> so I, I hear this song and it's belonged to the world by the weekend. Oh. And it's using the Portis head beat, and I'm like, this isn't like I didn't. I don't think I liked it at first. I was like not into it. Uh -huh. And then I, it, it took me a few months, and I came across House of Balloons. Then I got into like you know the other shit. But mm -hmm. it's funny like how I found because Portis is like my favorite band, so uh -huh. I found out about the weekend through like through them basically shit talking <laughs> the weekend on Twitter. So it's like interesting how that works out yeah so but if you listen to portishead and listen back to the weekend it's like you'll definitely hear the similarities so when i first heard that i could i was like this sounds like a more pop portishead or something like okay, the creepiness and the, the slow you know brooding vocals and yeah man that's some good yeah. that's some good stuff and i think so that's a lot, that's kind of the stuff that i felt when i was listening to your stuff it was definitely mood altering put me in a certain mood a dark mood um but that's i like that stuff and i felt a lot of the the similarities with the weekend in that in that regard for sure um so just to uh piggyback a little bit here what does how did you come up with the name kuja dude i don't know like it doesn't really mean anything i guess uh -huh. i i struggle like a lot with naming things because i'm just like the type of person that I, like come up with a name 
in like an image or something, anything, and I'll just be like, I'll go look back at it in like a month or two, and I'll be like, damn, I wish I didn't do that. So I tried to, I tried to pick something that really just meant nothing, so I like wouldn't feel any type of way towards it. You know what I mean? Uh huh. I just tried to be like as like passive with the name as possible. So uh huh. It means nothing. So that's the story. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I like that. Um, and when did you start going by Kuja? I guess immediately after you you stopped uh, with the band. Yeah, I think it was April of last year. So okay. it's been just about a year. Okay. All right. And how would you how would you describe the music that you make? I don't know. I try to keep it interesting. Like I try to do like things that people haven't heard before. I take like I'm influenced by like a lot of like prog rock and like different alternative rock bands and they tend to use like a lot of shoegaze music uses a lot of like weird samples even like a lot of trip hop so i try to infuse that into like some sort of like i don't know i guess some of my some of my, my music has like a pop structure to it so i i guess the goal for me is to is to put that experimental trippy stuff into the context of something that's listenable because mm -hmm. like if you look at a lot of these bigger bands the experimental ones uh like one of my favorite bands of all time is the <clears throat> the mars volta and they're massive but you compare their success to something like um i don't know something on the radio and it's just ridiculous like the difference in how big the audience sizes are so i would like to take something like that that sound and, and put it into the like the context of uh pop or something not pop but just something that like the average person would be able to enjoy mm -hmm. where they otherwise wouldn't have listened to something that like that i guess if so, that makes any sense yeah so do you feel like the average person can't enjoy the music you make so far N uh no i don't i don't think so i think that they can um if anything like the stuff that i just put out is like m more easy to listen to than like uh the stuff I plan on releasing, but I still want to do like, you know, easy to listen to songs. I'm not going to go completely experimental and weird, but like, because like I said, the whole point, in my opinion, I, like I want to do experimental, trippy, weird shit, and but also put it in the form of like something that someone can just easily put on and listen to. So like catchiness and not an eight minute prog rock jam, you know, mm -hmm. like. If this makes sense, if if you listen to the like the type of music I'm talking about, you would probably have a better understanding of what I mean. Because like a lot of these bands, will, they'll have like a cool, catchy part here and there, and then it goes into like uh, you know a five minute drum break with a guitar solo with right. 100 percent delay on it or something. Give give us give us some songs to listen to so I can I'm gonna write them down here and I'm gonna okay. hit you back um, later. The Mars Volta Junk Ship of Lanterns. Mars Volta, and this will be on YouTube, I'm assuming. Yeah. Jump ship of lantern. Drunk, drunk ship. Oh, drunk. Of lantern. Shit, drunk. Yeah. This is interesting because I don't think my audience, per se, would know <laughs> about this stuff. So, because I, I think my audience tend to get categorized more into the hip hop R and B crowd. Um, yeah. Definitely a little bit on the more experimental side, but that music is kind of becoming a little bit more popular now, anyway. Yeah, that's what I, was, I wanted to talk about was how like interesting I think uh, I think music in general is in a really interesting place because I feel like the more experimental stuff, like the weird stuff, is like becoming popular. Like kind of like how the '90s was. Like if you look at a lot of the bands from the '90s, it's like some of those bands should have never even existed or like gotten to the level of uh, fame that they did. But yeah. just like the the times and the like. <clears throat> the time, the timing for those bands, and I feel like the same shit is happening nowadays. Yeah, I agree. the uh, The internet has made it easy for people of all creeds and colors and interests to find something that they identify with and like. Um, especially a platform like SoundCloud, you can find anything and everything on there, and that's one of the things I like about that platform. Yeah, well, it's also just like in general, like socially, it's like very acceptable to be different now, and mm -hmm. I feel like that's reflecting on the music you know what i mean right which is right. cool i think that's awesome because it's like you can be weird as fuck and like people will listen to you right or at least give you a better chance than they would of 10 years ago right that's that's true 
and not to and not to mention you can uh you know build a fan base yourself um yeah yeah like the artist has so much at their disposal to to mm -hmm. do I come from nothing like literally nothing there's so many artists now that start out ground zero on soundcloud and then they're like touring across different countries and you know right um it's awesome i know i've seen i've seen artists that i've talked to when i first started doing this who you know when i first started talking to them weren't doing shows but as they've grown over the past couple of years now they're able to do shows because of their their following has increased and they've been able to demonstrate that they have a uh, solid fan base and people like their stuff so yeah exactly that's awesome um tell tell me the name of that song again i miss drunk ship of what of lanterns of lanterns all right <clears throat> that's just one random ass song i don't know there's a lot of great songs but that just came to my and i wrote down portis head too yeah great bands all right i'm gonna check out some of their stuff and um let you know what i think um so you mentioned you're from Connecticut. How much, how much of that do you think influences your your music? Because I talk to people from all over the country, and sometimes it has influence like where they're located. Um, I recently talked to two people from Canada and I asked them about the whole like, I'm sure you're familiar with like Drake and OVO thing, and like Canada mm -hmm. getting a lot more like recognition in the music space lately. So I was asking particularly about how that has influenced their music and if it has at all. So how would you say like being being in the USA and you know being in the Northeast how that affects your music if at all? Uh I couldn't really say for sure because I've never really left Connecticut uh aside from you know I've gone to Florida when I was younger but I haven't really been many other places um so I don't know. I guess it would subconsciously like whether or not I realize it or not the the location around you kind of molds you as a person like um, your environment so yeah I guess I, I would say it, it has influenced me in some sort of way but I don't know exactly how much okay is is music a, like a big thing where you're from uh, well, I think music's a big thing everywhere but um, as far as like if there's bands and stuff here like a, a music scene you, you mean yeah um, my experience in with the music scene and being in a rock band here is like pretty shitty um a lot of like venues exploit the bands and it's kind of like pay to play to get on the good shows like mm -hmm. hundreds of dollars basically um and there's a lot of like clicks with where the bigger bands will all just stay together and kind of like keep out like upcoming acts like out of the circle and deny them shows and uh -huh. that's my experience is that it sucks and people are elitist as fuck but um i don't know about the other scene like the hip-hop scene here i'm not really sure because i haven't i'm not going to play shows until i actually have a reason to do so like if if i'm going to get like 15 people to show up i'm probably not going to perform you know what i mean uh -huh. like i want to i'd rather use that time and money on <clears throat> on something else okay unless it like I, I my goal is to wait until there's like you know a decent amount of people right because otherwise i could put that time and money into something like a music video where i'm just gonna like uh get to a lot of more people entertain a lot more people you know that's true yeah. that's true so speaking of that what is that is that a number uh you have in your mind or is that a number of followers or something that you have in mind there where you reach that level of success that you start uh, looking to perform just until it makes sense with like money and time like i guess okay because it's like a show isn't something that's just easy to set up right you need a band behind you which i have but it's like time out of their schedule it's like booking the venue it's um paying promoters you know it's a lot to have like a, to to do a real show i mean not some like vfw shit with a uh, strobe light in the background like <laughs> you know like yeah. a real show like it's money and time and it's like rehearsal it's like so i'm not going to go through all that for for 10 people to show up right I don't think anybody would. Yeah, I mean it's a lot of work, and it, it may seem it may not seem like uh, you know it pays off, but I think I only say this because I've done that for like eight years. Like I've played really shitty shows for like 
my whole life and I'm over it. So I'm going to wait until I can actually have a successful show to perform. That's my plan. That's fair. I just know I probably seem like an asshole for saying that, but it's just <laughs> like try playing in a shitty band for eight years. Not shitty, not the band being shitty, but our poll, like our, you know, people uh-huh. that would come out and like, it's just like I've been there and done that. So <clears throat> ready to like play to, I'm going to wait. That's all I'm saying. And so when you play these shows, you, you were playing them like all over the Northeast or this was just in Connecticut? Uh, this was in like New York, Boston. Oh, so um, some big places. We went to like Buffalo, New York, uh-huh. uh, Sy- like Syracuse. Like, um, we went to Ohio and we didn't play. Um, yeah, most a lot of shows in Boston. That's where our, a lot of our friends went to college there. So there was a decent like music scene in Boston that we would go to and tap into a little bit. We would play some basement shows there, which were pretty cool. Um, like, things weren't totally, like, abysmally dark with that band. Like, we were starting to pick up a little bit towards the end, but uh, we just had, like, I don't know. We released an album that kind of flopped, and we just, like, got, we were over it. Like, we all wanted to move on, so that's where we're at now. Okay. Um, wow. All right. So, let's see. When did When did your project come out? Was it six months ago? The whole thing, like the yeah. When did you release all of the songs? I actually released those one by one. So the first song came out, I believe, in April of 2016, which right. was the the low song. I think you sent me six of them. Yeah, I probably sent you six of them, like when there were only six out, and then since then I've released two more. Oh, okay. So like, people think I just dropped that EP like all at once, but I just added to it. Like I, I didn't really have any plans with it. I just kind of released them one by one. Okay. All right. So the EP, my favorite joint on there, they're all good because I think they're, they all like, uh, I guess put me in, put me in that mood that I like from your sound. Um, but my favorite one is nothing to hide. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know that's number eight that I see. Um, I also like pretty little dancer as well. And uh, I think it was uh, low, yeah, low. What about what about you? Which one is which ones are your favorite? Um, probably uh, low, just because it's like I don't know. I got the a lot of people like that one, and I think it's like the first one, and it just came out right. I don't mm-hmm. know. So what's what's your process like? Do you, do you produce all of this yourself? Like you produce all the instrumentation in the back? And then no, you're... I usually, um, I'll link up with an artist on SoundCloud and and we'll just like agree that we want to work together. And then um, he'll send me a track and I usually end up like splicing it in some way or slowing it down or like adding my own drums. So like a lot of those are produced by other people, but like it's not like completely just me singing over someone else's track. Um, I'd definitely like to change the structure of the song that's like important to me like how many choruses it has or like where's the bridge i'll do that um and then there's like a couple songs where i did my own drums they'd sound the most amateur but like the beat itself worked better with what i was singing than what the original instrumental was and those songs i think uh remedy and pretty little dancer have my drums on it and um and then for the night is like i produce everything on that that's like my least favorite track, but that's the one that I did the everything on. Okay. <laughs> all right. So that's crazy. I didn't think, I thought you did all of them, honestly. Um, no, a lot of people think that, but. Yeah, because I mean, the sound, they sound like they sound cohesive. They don't sound like someone else did them. Like, especially if you're telling me that different people did each one. Yeah. So it's funny because like I go through so many like I listen to so many people's music and like I guess I just like heard what I wanted and like each song must have just had a consistent vibe or something because so, it's funny that you think that you thought they were all the same person now they're all completely different people from like all over the world wow <laughs> so can you tell us like who it's in the description of like every video and I think uh, my SoundCloud has like, I credit every producer um, a few like nothing to hide uh, was my friend Forsy, he's like a, he makes like future wave type stuff and like trap beats, but he also makes like cool, like chill down tempo stuff. Mm-hmm. 
Um, some other ones. Uh, Dysphoria, I think, is one of them. He made Days. Um, can't really remember. Okay. Oh, oh, uh, Low. Yeah, this guy, Low. Um, I forgot his name. <laughs> He's, I hope he doesn't watch this. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, his name is Low? No, no, the song's Low, but Uh-oh. I'm trying to think, like, what, who the producer was. It's, uh, Decepticon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice. That's it. Yeah. That's a, that's a, <laughs> Transformers, I like that. Um, He's like, he makes like weird trip hop stuff. Okay. He's cool. And how do you find these guys? Just listening to music in my room. Just, you know. Just chilling, vibing out. And you listen to a lot of SoundCloud? Not unless it's pretty much I listen to SoundCloud, like, just for like working with people. I don't really go on there just to listen to music. Okay. Because, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> so you, you, you go on there with a purpose. Yeah. You're a man yeah, on a I mission. Don't. I don't waste time. All right. So who do you listen to when you're when you're not? Um, like, what do you listen to when you're not trying to? You find look at my history work? on Spotify. I've been listening to a lot of Bruno Mars lately. Actually, he's awesome. I love Bruno. Like his voice is just he's a he's one of the greatest of all time for I, sure. I agree with you. He's <laughs> underrated. Like, not. I don't think he's underrated. I just think like I don't know. He's massive. I mean, he's he's so popular i don't think he's underrated but he's i don't know i think he this is why i think he's underrated that because when you think like r&b vocalist singer i think the first person you should think of is bruno mars because i think he's just that good and that big time but yeah I, but i think people would think of somebody else or uh, would think of other people yeah that's true he's just like he's not as in in the hip-hop scene as the weekend or another r&b singer would be right feel like so I feel like that's what's on everyone's mind right now. Like that's the kind of like zeitgeist of music is like the fucking hip hop, right? Trap, trap stuff, you know? Right. But yeah, Bruno Mars is incredible. Uh, yeah, he is. He's awesome. I listen. I, Bruno Mars. This is weird. Um, Bruno Mars, Marilyn Manson, uh, this really cool band from Japan called Downey. They're like shoegaze. Um. Uh, where else can I see this? Down. Oh, Kendrick Lamar, of course. Damn uh-huh. is amazing. Uh huh. Circus Survive. Um, Blink 182. <laughs> I tried to listen to True to Self by Bryson Tiller. Uh, Childish Gambino, Tory Lanez. I listen to all different types of stuff. Okay, so, alright. I thought you were to listen. I don't know. I thought you were gonna be listening to some like crazy, crazy shit from like China or something. I don't know. But um, <laughs> I do. I do listen to my fair share of weird Asian <laughs> bands, but um, no, not exclusively. All right, cool. So you're getting all different types of stuff going on there. Yeah, I like to just keep one foot in like the new and one foot in the old, and just I don't know, keep an eye on somewhere in the middle, like. I don't like to just like limit myself to one type of music or listen to one type of music or anything like that. Okay. I appreciate music for what it is. And good music is everywhere. You're right. It is. it is. And at every level too. Yeah. Um, so I notice, so where do you, where are most people listening to your music from? Like, where do you, where I, do you feel like it's identifying? Where people well, are I can just with. tell you, like, from analytics, like, yeah, that's what from I'm, Sound, that's what I'm SoundCloud and YouTube and, like, some other websites. Um, United States is, like, one of the biggest. And then it's Russia. Mm-hmm. I there's a lot that. of people from Russia. And there's actually, um, speaking of Russia, this guy that he made, like, a fan page for me on VK.com. It's a Russian Facebook, basically. Mm-hmm. And he's cool because he got me a lot of, um, like, a lot of views over there, like, some uh, fan page for like Russian like music over there. The, the reposts of my stuff from his fa- fan page of me, mm-hmm. and it got like eighty thousand views on one of the posts. And, wow! Um, his name, yeah, Rasul Izev. Uh, what is he in? Uh, That's Koma. pretty cool. So collective or something? Yeah, They're, he's awesome. He 
he helps me out. Yeah, so there's good fans in Russia that are helping me out, and uh, they're probably like the second most listen. Like they listen to it the second most. So you're gonna be working with this guy in the future for like promotion and distribution purposes? No, I don't think so. I think he's just a fan. Oh, okay. But he posts like like all my music on there, and like a few months ago, he like sent me a screenshot where he got like five or five thousand plays on the EP. Pretty nice. good. He's, yeah, he's awesome. Yeah, I was thinking that your music would do well somewhere uh, overseas. Not hopefully the whole world. I mean, I just want to make music for people, like no matter where you're from. Yeah, but and I'm already like not like that. I have a lot of fans or anything like that, but um, I can like see that it's like there's no really like when I look at people that are listening to it, there's not really a specific demographic or like a specific area that like listens to it a lot like it's just like pretty even across the board mm -hmm. so is that that's that's what you're hoping for yeah just i think that's a good sign okay just like good music is the goal and like i feel like everyone likes good music so it should appear everywhere but I, um this first ep that i made like i'm i think what i'm gonna put out after it's gonna be like way better in in what in what way just because I don't think that highly of that EP, so I feel like it's pretty. It'd be easy to to one up it, but I also like. I don't know. I just feel good about what I'm making. Okay, and when right now at least. But when I release it, I'll probably hate it. When can we expect that to come out? I don't know. I'm going on vacation soon to Japan, and then I'm gonna work a lot when I get back. But. But yeah, you mentioned that. How how long are you in Japan for? Thirteen days awesome man you yeah you enjoy that i'm sure it's gonna be awesome that's one of the places that i want to go to for sure yeah going straight to tokyo so it's gonna be a lot of good food and absolutely um, i was originally gonna do a music video there but i said fuck that because it's not it's i just want i'm gonna wait to do the music video until until it's gonna be right yeah i thought you were going there for business at first when you mentioned that uh yeah like i'm definitely planning to do photos and stuff there i'm not just gonna sit there and do nothing mm-hmm like, I have also feel like just being there, like, I've never left my country before. I've never even been, like, that far from home, like, within my own country. So to, just to go to that country, like, so far away and experience the culture and, like, come back and then, like, continue to work on this music I'm going to put out, I feel like it's going to influence it in a really interesting way, like a positive way. So is that why, is that one of the reasons why you chose Japan to go to? Yeah, I guess. I've always wanted to go there. Seems like a pretty cool place. Yeah, so you just you just booked the ticket. Yeah, awesome. Took the leap of faith. <laughs> uh, I remember speaking speaking of what we were talking about earlier with the weekend. I remember him, him talking about how that, that it was Kiss Land. It was like really heavily influenced by Japan because sort of like him, yeah. like he hadn't been out of the country for a while, uh, like ever out of out of Canada. For, ever and that was like one of the first places he went to and he was heavily, he was <laughs> heavily funny. influenced by it and then you could see like all over the album like the artwork and i guess yeah. the vibe a little bit so uh maybe we'll see that with you too i don't know about that but it should be cool <laughs> like i think i have an idea for what i want everything to be like already but i just feel like it's going to give me positive energy when i go to record absolutely i feel that as well so you don't know for sure when it's coming. Do you know if it'll be in 2017, 2018, or you just kind of go with the flow? Oh, oh 2017 guy? for sure. Yeah. Okay, dude. I think I think winter time, like with your type of vibe. I don't. It sounds like you're gonna be doing something different, but if you kind of on that similar wavelength, I think that'd be perfect. There's definitely gonna be stuff where, like, if people have listened to my old stuff and they like it, they're without a doubt gonna like the new stuff. Yeah. I'm just I'm just expanding on that. Okay. Taking like the best from the first and just expanding on it, improving on it, and yeah, so that's what you should do with every album. Try to outdo yourself. For sure, I think I think you'll have a lot of success with that. I'll be looking forward to that. Um, cool. You see, there's a few there's a few more questions here. I want to talk about what did because we have a lot of young artists that listen to this and like want to be in in your position one day. What do you what do you, yeah yeah man 500 <laughs> dude it's no joke getting like soundcloud subscribers like it's it's hard work it's yeah, not it easy it like is. you, you can't from ground zero is 
uh, I guess it's difficult, but I'm not too far from it. So it's like, you know. Yeah, like people, like people put stuff out all the time, and like nobody listens to it. So building building up a following like you have is is something you should definitely be proud of and commended for. Sure. for. Um, so like, what did what did your family and your parents say? I mean, it sounds like you've been doing music a long time, so this probably happened a long time ago. But what do like your family and friends say about your about music? Oh, um, I don't know if my well, my father is past, but my mom, I don't think she knows that I do music. What? Um, yeah. And how how's that? Um, without getting too know. detailed, she if just, you don't want she to. just like doesn't really like care. Like she just, I don't know. Not that she doesn't care, but maybe she. I just don't care to tell her. So she's just never heard anything like, of yours. No, she heard like my first song, and it's a. It was like she liked it. Yeah. Like your first, like your first song on SoundCloud. Oh, she or? heard, she heard low, yeah, and she was like, cool. Okay. But like, it's not like I'm not trying to make a fan out of my mom. Like I'm not gonna like keep showing her songs. Like, you know. What if if, if she asks about it, will you? Yeah, I would show her, but like she, we're not like. We talk about like other stuff, like you know, jobs. I got you. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, what about what about your friends? I mean, I'm assuming a lot of your friends probably do music too, because you run a band. Yeah, a lot of my friends are just old friends I had like in the bands I used to be in, and they're supportive. They like it. Okay. Um. Yeah. All right. And what what all the what are all the instruments you play? Because I know you mentioned like the guitar. Um, uh, what else? Yeah, do you, pretty else do you much. Do? Pretty much just the guitar. I can't play drums for shit. And um, yeah, I'd say that's it. <laughs> I'm not like that talented or anything. All right, but but you. It sounds like you're getting into production, so you do a little bit of that too. Yeah, I do. Like I mix and I do. Um, I have like a MIDI keyboard and stuff like that, and I like sample. So. Okay. And what what tips or advice would you give to somebody who's looking to, I guess, get started down their musical journey? Uh, I would say just to do it. I don't know, put just, up music and just show your it. friends. Yeah. How do you how do you get over the fact that people may not like it or people may like hate it? Just get over it. What do you have to say about that? Because uh, that's that's a real thing, man. People, there's there's probably some really good music sitting on somebody's hard drive that they're really afraid to put out there. So so what? Do yeah, you... I don't know. I think music in itself is about self-expression. So if you're afraid to express yourself, then probably shouldn't do music. I don't know. Just release it. Put it out. You got to. <laughs> right. You know, like you have to be willing to be vulnerable and show yourself to do music. So get over it and put it out. There you go. Some some wise words right there. Um, um, so, what's your what's your setup like? Like, do you just record on a mic in your computer? Do you have like a little mini, mini studio that you built, or what's yeah, that like? Um, I have just a mic going into an interface, very like really simple. That's it. I it, I think I, it's like it was two hundred dollars for everything I have. Like uh -huh. just bare bones nothing in a room okay so what, so what, what would be the it's next pretty easy to do what would be the next thing you bought if you just like won like a thousand dollars or something yeah new mic for sure microphone it's a just i would spend it all on a microphone really and a preamp yeah okay there's nothing else i need what do i like all music is now is like inside the computer so i have like my mic and my midi keyboard MIDI keyboard is you can upgrade it all you want. It's still gonna put in the same digital signal into the DAW. So it's like <clears throat> all I need is a good mic. That's like the one piece to upgrade, basically. And and mics are like a huge deal. No, because I'm recording on a two hundred dollar mic. It sounds alright. So no, I wouldn't say mics are a huge deal, but you definitely should at least get a condenser mic with a pop filter. I would say. Okay. All right. So. So like a two hundred dollar setup for people, good barrier to entry, or even two, less than two that. Two to three, yeah, two to three is like pretty like low level entry point. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but it's going to sound, I mean, it could, it sounds like my stuff. That's, yeah. that's what, that's what low level audio equipment sounds like. Okay. So if you're listening to this and you, and you like the way his music sounds, you can get in the game for about two to 300. Yeah. It's all about mixing. That's it. Mixing is the most important thing. Okay. Let's talk about that a little bit. How do you, first of all, for people that don't know what, what exactly is mis- mixing? It's just like, um, how the, the loudness, like the levels of each audio track interact with each other okay and how it forms into a song and like all the effects you hear all the delays like all the reverbs and it's all mixing the whole attitude like the whole vibe of the song mostly comes from mixing of course like what you're recording raw into your computer is super important too you can't just like mix something into a good song you have to have something good to start with but mixing is extremely important especially especially for your music right yeah, it's like so reliant on the that atmosphere and like the trippiness and like the you know it gives it depth, I guess. Uh huh. So, so here's a here's a question I had is for artists such as yourself who use a lot of like the mixing and the, and all the enhancements there. Can can you do that when you perform live? Like, can you do that into a microphone? Yeah, definitely. It's all it's just reverb and delay. Okay, that's all it is. Like. It's nothing like crazy unless you're talking about like the the distorted like background vocals i would just like do those on a probably like a backing track or something okay but for the like yeah i could make it sound just like the record live but that's honestly something i, I would avoid doing i think when i play live i'm gonna do it with a band like a whole like a whole band with drums and and all that and you think it would have like a similar feel than as as we hear on the track as we hear like on the internet i don't know no it might be different like it might be like a completely different experience and i think that's cool okay to just like experience the the band that you like or the music that you like in a different way but like you still know the song so it's like i don't know sometimes i think that it's like you see the performer and they're just basically like they're singing into auto like a mic with auto tune over a backing track like an mp3 and at what like at that point it's like I don't know. What are you paying to see at that point? Mm-hmm. You're just you're just going there, and they're playing what they play on the radio. Except the artist is standing there. But like, I also have a respect for that too. Like, I'm not completely like saying I wouldn't do that. But I think I would start out trying to do something a bit different live, like a yeah. different energy. I definitely I definitely empathize with that because I got a buddy of mine who I'm always trying to get to go with me to concerts, but he, he never wants to go because he says he doesn't want to just go listen to loud music. <laughs> he could go do he could do that in his house. No, it's different. Yeah, a live show should be a live show. It should be like, you know, it should have a an energy. It should be fun. Like it, it should be fun to watch and fun to hear. It should be like different from the recording, in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. Depending for sure. on the music. I think. I think for sure a lot of people definitely agree with that. Um, so interesting, interesting perspective there. Um, so I guess the last question here is, so a lot of people who are up and coming artists, obviously they don't just, you know, they just, they just can't wake up one day and like they're able to do that full time. Um, I wish sometimes it was that easy. But so what, what exactly do you do to like kind of make ends meet so you can continue uh, pursuing this on the side? Uh, just a lot of side stuff. I do like eBay and stuff like that. Oh, you flip stuff on eBay? Yeah, I flip stuff. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, how long have you been doing that? For like years, just always doing weird, you know, scams and just, uh, yeah, I'm bad at holding a job. <laughs> <laughs> That's not your cup of tea, huh? No, not at all. I don't, I know I can't function in this world without like doing some weird shit like this. So, what exactly do you flip? Like, you have like a niche or something? Um, or just anything and everything. Anything and everything, really. Yeah. Okay. And like, I feel like I feel like that's a good thing for artists to potentially get into because you can, you do that from your home, right? Yeah. And. Uh, it's a good way to make some extra money. Maybe get get a 
if you're an artist, get a new computer, like some new equipment or something. Upgrade yeah, well, it teaches stuff. you how to run a business, and that's important. An artist in this industry needs to know how to run a business. And, like, not that I'm, like, running a business per se, but I'm definitely, like, I don't know. I know about money, and I know, like, supply and demand. Like, I know the basics of, like, this shit. Like, I've done the stock market and, like, not extensively, but, like, just, I don't know. Uh... As an example, just like I know how to flip stuff, which mm -hmm. is like an important skill to have, I think, especially in this like music world that we're in now, <clears throat> where it's like very DIY and like you're basically selling a product, you're starting a business and selling a product. So, um, yeah, yeah, I think I think you're dead on with that because a lot of uh, a lot of artists, you know, they are the they are the business. Um, so you, they definitely need to know like how to run a business. And I feel like that could definitely help them with like marketing themselves better, uh, distributing their product better. Um, yeah. You know, all, all of the above things there. But um, I'm not to, trying to say like that music is just a business and we're selling products like, but that's like a, a basic idea of it. Like getting people to like your music is basically like getting people to like, like see something in a product, like not to like make it so like, ob like objectify it. And, uh -huh. but yeah, I'm not like that. Like, I definitely think music is more than just a product. And, like, I love music and I love art. I'm just saying, <clears throat> like, a business mentality doesn't hurt to have at all. For sure. For sure. And I think that, I think with today's climate, it's getting, it's getting more spotlighted. It, like, the business aspect is getting more spotlighted. So I think yeah, people are, people are trying sure. to understand that a little bit more. Well, like, for instance, like, an artist, when they go on tour, like, it's all, it's like, it's very, it's still even at the highest of level, like it's DIY, like they're selling shirts out there, they're like mm -hmm. promoting their show on like SoundCloud and, I mean, not, not SoundCloud, like Snapchat and Instagram, like right. they're still doing stuff by themselves, it's not like you just, all these successful artists are like very business mentality like oriented, Kanye West for example, Right. look at him, like, you know, like the right. biggest of the, like Drake, like the biggest artists are like they're like businessmen right diddy he's about to be a billionaire okay. yeah he i didn't i didn't even know his net worth is one of the biggest in the music industry it's and he 750 has million yeah it's he's about to be a billionaire it's crazy and then obviously you got jay-z dr dre yeah those guys um so that's interesting and you that's where longevity comes from is like those kind of people with the, that they know how to like switch up what they're doing and like keep people interested and that's just like yeah. Yeah. It goes hand in hand with running a business. Longevity is everything. Yeah. Um, so do you think, speaking of longevity, how long do you think you'll be doing music? Definitely forever. Like whether or not I do, I'm making money from it. I'm always, I've always been doing music. I always will do music. So uh, just as a creative it. outlet at a minimum. Yeah. I would definitely go crazy if I didn't do music. Okay. <laughs> All right. Awesome. So just, just wrapping up here. Thank you so much for your time, Kuja. Um, where can people reach out to you? SoundCloud, um, Twitter. Like, I'm on all that trash, so you can message me here. Okay, of course I'll put the links in the description box. Maybe I'll put them in the video. Uh, cool. Uh, can people email you if they want, want to yeah, send absolutely. you beats and stuff? Or, like, work yeah. with you or something? For sure. I'll, I'll listen to everything, so... All right, what's what's your email? Kujamusic at gmail.com. All right, excellent. Um, so I think that's about it. Thanks, cool, thanks man. guys, I if you're listening so much. to this. Um, please go ahead and hit that like and the subscribe button if you haven't already. We'll be doing more interviews like this, hopefully weekly, if not bi-weekly. Um, thanks again, Kuja. Oh,